Hi guys, I hope we are uh, all okay. Today I want us to have a very different segment uh, than, uh, other than our usual uh, segment. So basically the main uh, concept or the main agenda of this video is for us to share, is for us to understand what is the best strategy for us to hack our CASNEB examinations. Remember, at this point, we do understand that uh, the syllabus was uh, changed, things were amended. In the same case, you'll also find that uh, the system, or rather the trend of setting the exams, also quite of uh, changed a bit. And uh, also in this segment, of course, if time will allow, I also want us to see and also understand and have a very candid conversation. We are going to ask ourselves this question. In five years or three years to come, you as an accountant, will you be relevant? These are some of uh, the uh, touching issues that I want us to discuss in these videos of ours today. So first of all, let us start by the best strategy on how to hack CASNEB exams given these new trends. And in this case, I will want to dwell much on uh, intermediate level and partly advanced level. To start with intermediate, we know very well that you are expected to cover like six papers, right? Out of these six papers will include financial reporting, financial management, company law, auditing and assurance, management accounting, and public finance and taxation. Out of these six papers, my good students, if you can take a sample, take your group, your sample group of say like uh, 20 students. Of these 20 students, Assuming they're having a retake, ask all of them the paper that they are retaking. I'm 100% sure that 90% of these students, high chance in intermediate, they will be retaking financial management. That one I'm 100% sure. Why? FM in intermediate and also in advanced level, FM is a serial killer. Why is Molimu saying that this is a serial killer? We are going to see how we are, why we are saying that it is a serial killer. So to this point, let us first of all understand. What's the best, what's the best strategy that you must always tend to have for you to hack financial management? So our concept is usually like we should always be guys or rather we should always be students who are focused on, or we should always be kind of a practice practical oriented right rather than theoretical we should always be kind of a uh, very practical oriented but again we must pass exams and that's why Molimu is giving us what these hacks right we must pass these exams and that's why Molimu is going to give us these hacks let us start with financial management let us start with financial management and actually this is not only for CASNEB students but any student doing financial management there is always a foundation there is always that main concept that you must always tend to have. This is not only for students doing CASNEB paper, by the way. So long as you're doing financial management in whichever course that you're doing, if it is a NEC, if it is a ACCA, if it is a CASNEB, whichever course that you're doing and that's financial management, there are some very important concept that you must always tend to do or that you must always tend to have. We are talking of the manual, right? The manual of financial management. In this case, you'll find that uh, this paper is always a serial killer. Why? Because there are some key areas that you must be very good at. Not just good, you must be very good at. Why? they always tend to relate. Once you've not, once, once in this case, maybe you've not uh, identified, or rather you've not gotten a certain concept correct, you'll also find that it will affect you to the next question in, uh, directly. And therefore, if a question was allocated, say like 15 marks, you might end up getting two marks or even four marks. That would be the path towards destruction. But the good thing is that today, Molimu would want to give us a secret. Once you have this secret, once you have this secret, I'm 100% sure that there's no time when financial management will be an issue on your end. Therefore, take this as a backbone of financial management. 
take this as a backbone of financial management take this as a backbone take this as a backbone backbone of financial management backbone of financial management you have to be very good at this if you're not good in these areas that Molimo is going to cover, I don't know how you're going to pass financial management. That on a hundred percent sure. It will be kind of a, a mountainous task for you to pass what? For you to pass this financial management. Number one element. We are talking of time value of money. Time value of money. If there is a main backbone that we can talk about, then this is everything. One of the main backbone, time value of money, whereby it is at this point that you'll be required to know how to use your present value interest factor annuity table and your present value interest factor table. It is at this point that you must also be very good with the formulas of present value and the formulas of future value. So you'll find that the time value of money, it is one thing that you must always tend to understand and understand very very well that is one of the main backbone number two talk about what we are referring to as the valuation talk about financial asset these are basically business or financial asset or financial financial asset valuation financial asset valuation another key concept again that it must be at your fingertips at any given point, this is where we normally tend to talk about valuation of debentures, valuation of ordinary shares, valuation of preference shares. All this will be covered under business or finance asset valuation, which will find that again, this concept here will affect us directly in topic, this other topic, whereby ideally you'll find that this is basically topic number four in, uh, of course, uh, intermediate. This is a basically topic number topic number five. Then you're also having number three. At this point, basically a real what? Concept known as what? Aspect of cost of into capital. Uh, or rather talk about uh, capital structure decisions. Talk about basically capital structure decisions. Capital structure decisions. Capital structure decision. Whereby it is at this point where we normally tend to talk of what? Cost of equity, cost of uh, uh, retained earnings, that is uh, retained earnings, so of course you're having uh, ordinary shares and uh, retained earnings. Talk about cost of preference shares, talk about cost of debentures, you should be able to know redeemable and irredeemable debentures. So you'll find that topic number five will affect us directly in topic number six will affect us directly in topic number six topic number five will have a direct impact in topic number six see how this flows topic four will affect us directly in topic five topic five will affect us directly in topic number six imagine this tragedy if you've not understood topic number four that is to say topic number five will be quite difficult for you to handle as well as topic number six will also be quite difficult for you to handle. Come talk about number four element. This is a basically uh, topic number seven, which we are referring to it as what? Introduction to capital budgeting. So basically this is what? Capital budgeting decisions. Capital budgeting decisions. At this point, you've noted, or rather already you've known, the cause that you are going to incur in each and every component that you're going to use to raise your capital, right? So that's why at this point, you'll be required to make that decision. Topic number, we are talking about topic number seven. So you'll find that the whole concept that we studied it in topic number three and also partly topic number four will affect us directly in topic number seven, which ideally is at this point whereby you normally tend to talk about what you are referring to as, uh, of course, uh, aspect of uh, discounting techniques and dis non-discounting techniques. Recall the concept of a payback period. Talk about IRR. Talk about the net present value. Talk about all these concepts of discounted payback period. All of them, you'll be expected to cover them he which where? Here. 
under capital budgeting decision. And why are we saying that these topics, they kind of, they have a certain relationship? Imagine you are handling capital budgeting decision. You are required to compute what? You are required to work out NPV, net present value. Whereby, of course, at this point, you know very well that net present value should be having what? Your present value, of course, of what? Present value of cash flows. Present value of cash flows. You less what? Your initial outlay. So in this case, you'll find that before I arrive at the present value of cash flow, I must apply the aspect of what? Either the present value interest factor annuity or I must use the present value interest factor, which you had covered in topic number, which you had covered here, which you had covered here. Imagine at this point, my good students, you don't know how to work out the present value interest factor annuity. The beginning of the tragedy. And once you've messed any of the cash inflows, of course, that is to say your NPV will be wrong. So if the marks was allocated, say, like uh, uh, 10 marks, maybe you can answer like only like one or two points of the formulas. Whereas in this case, remember, like it's not like uh, statement papers where they normally tend to mark entries. In this case, you have to be very clear with what you are doing. The same case will happen with, say, like uh, when you're talking of capital structure decision. Assuming you want to work out WMCC, or maybe you want to work out WACC, you will be required to have a knowledge of what? Cost of capitals. That is, of course, cost of equity, cost of ordinary shares, cost of preference shares. If you don't have that knowledge, or maybe you only know, say, like cost of equity, then you don't know cost of debentures or cost of preference shares. You are very sure that this one you're going to get it wrong. Then that's why uh, financial management is a serial killer. Why? Because you'll find that whatever that you've gotten, say, like uh, maybe on the first uh, step, it will affect you directly on the second step. For the, for the second step, it will affect you directly on the third step. So if you miss step number one, surely all these other elements, of course, you're going to miss. You're not going to get them just to be sincere, just to be frank. You're not going to get them unless you say, Menini, luck, right? But luck, of course, will also come with you guys working hard, correct? And working smart as well. So basically, you find that uh, these are main areas that at any given point, if you are doing financial management, you just have to be very, very, very good in the areas that Molimu has shared with us. In addition to this, there is other component which you never miss it. Number five, you never miss it in this since the syllabus was amended, since the syllabus was changed, you never miss this topic, which you are referring to as, of course, portfolio analysis. Portfolio analysis. You will never miss this. Portfolio analysis. My good students, you'll never miss this topic in your exams. You'll never miss that topic in your exams, which ideally this is topic number what? This is basically topic number 11. This is basically topic number 11. Topic number 11. You'll never miss portfolio analysis in your exams. These, since uh, the syllabus was changed, you'll find that portfolio is always a very common question that has always come since August when the syllabus was changed in financial management. So this is one area. Then the other key element, you'll also find that uh, aspect of, uh, again, which you must be having an idea, of course, these are contemporary issues more so, aspects to do with the digital currency, cryptocurrency, talk about blockchain. These are some of the theory bits that you must always tend to be very good at. So the secret for FM, be very good on these topics. Make sure that you are very good because they'll cover roughly like 60% of what is going to be tested. Then in that case, supplement these concepts that Mwalimu has shared with us with theory. I'm very sure you'll always tend to say, Mwalimu, thank you, because you showed us the way. That one, I'm 100% sure you'll always be having that. And this is a secret of passing FM. Be very good on the topics that you've shared. And again, supplement that with what? With theories. Supplement that with theories. You never miss, you never miss, you never miss, you never miss. That is financial management. I also want us to talk something about financial reporting because also in financial reporting, 
there are things that you must be very good at and as much as we normally tend to talk of a very few topics but again you'll find that there are those elements that you just have to be very very good at that case i believe you are done with the serial killer and the good thing is that for those doing december exams we having block revision for you guys we having a block revision which will enable you to be very good on these areas which will enable you basically to have these equipments of war so that you should be ready when the exam comes this is the strategy you can't pass and i'm using the word you can't pass fm if you're not good on this you'll be kind of uh, just redoing this paper you're like what is happening what is happening what is happening so you must be very good on that then after we've done with this uh, bit i'll also want us to talk about another paper here which you are referring to as financial reporting and analysis financial reporting and analysis so we are talking about financial reporting and analysis financial reporting and analysis financial reporting and analysis remember initially it was uh, being called what financial reporting there is component of analysis that was added right so what was the secret of passing financial reporting i know all of you must be knowing one main element is consolidation what if consolidation has not been kind of uh, tested or rather what if for example in this context the examiner misses to bring out consolidation you're always sure that this might be tested or rather this concept will always be tested but what if in this case it's not it's not tested will you not do your exams because whatever that you studied uh, all through a day and night has not been tested no you just have to proceed and do what and do that paper of yours right just a moment here you'll have to proceed and do that paper of yours you'll have to proceed and do that paper of yours so uh on this case focus will be on the following areas focus will be on the following areas whenever we are talking about financial reporting sorry for that focus will be on these areas number one there is item which was brought just the other day which you are referring to it as common size and i think it was attested the other time this is basically under analysis this is basically under analysis you will find that the new trend here we are talking of what common size financial statements common size financial statements and the good thing also is that uh, this concept also it is uh, on a practical paper that was introduced the other day for financial uh, or rather for 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 cpa that is uh, what you're referring to as a common size financial statement a very key element that you must be very good at then in this case we also talk about the aspect to do with published published financial statements published financial statements published financial statements and i want us to understand each other here under published you can be given aspect of you preparing your reports in terms of either income statement statement of financial position or statement of changes in equity but again we should also be very aware remember things changed we should also, we should also be very aware that also under this bit under this topic here there is cash flow cash flow initially it used to be under consolidation but with this new syllabus cash flow basically is covered under published financial statements so basically also that is to say uh, you should be very good on you should be very good on this uh, in this area that is in terms of our other financial statements as well as what as well as cash flows there's a very good question which was attested i think uh, back then in uh, i think it was uh, last sitting for cash flows that question either it was uh, april i think april uh, 2022 for cash flows that question basically is very good very 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 good which ideally it is covering the area of published uh, uh, accounts only 
So be very keen with that. Then what you should also be very aware here is that uh, there is this concept of uh, accounting for other institutions like bank and insurance. Remember these were removed at this level of intermediate and they were taken to advanced level. So again, avoid studying some irrelevant items or maybe in this case not irrelevant per se, for knowledge is okay. For exams, it's irrelevant. Uh -huh. Molly, what have you just said? We've said that, yes, for knowledge is okay. For exams, it's irrelevant. Right? At this level of intermediate level. Whereby, uh, aspect of accounting for banks, accounting for uh, insurance, they were taken where? They were taken at advanced level. So again, be keen with that. The, this area, which I believe is always, uh, it will always be common, again, though initially it was uh, not tested as uh, such uh, many times, but you should be very aware with these concepts of what, uh, basically that is of course uh, accounting uh, and financial statements for interest, basically in, uh, uh, for different entities actually, for different entities. Whereby, in this case, you should be very good in either of the following. That is, number one, talk about accounting for professional firms. Accounting for professional firms. Number two, accounting for agricultural. Accounting for agricultural firms and cooperative societies. And cooperative societies trust you me at this point you will not miss either of the following either of the three either professional agricultural or cooperative societies very important more so under this new syllabus areas that you should be very keen with areas that you should be very keen with then of course in addition to that there is aspect of branch right branch but remember branch in this case, what you must be very good at is that branch <coughs> at this level, we don't deal with foreign branches anymore. We don't deal with foreign branches anymore. We don't deal with foreign branches anymore. So basically branch, you can talk of, uh, of course, uh, the independent and the dependent branches, but not foreign branches. Of course, in this case, you can mark it with partnership. I know that this concept of dissolution in partnership which ideally it is not under this syllabus, but it's very important that you must always be aware of that knowledge because as much as it is not here, it is very, very important. The solution, they took it to financial accounting back in foundation level. But again, this concept is very vital. The concept of dissolution is very vital because it can also be tested at this level. Whether you uh, have tackled it here or not, they might taste you because they are assuming that the whole concept of partnership you must be very good at maybe except for amalgamation right but also amalgamation is key that you should be having the knowledge of the same then of course finally the one that you've been waiting for molimo you can't miss mention that one basically you're talking about consolidation and there's a video that i did about uh, the trick of uh, about the trick of uh, you working out consolidation it will take you like only 20 minutes. A maximum of 25 minutes you are done with consolidation. I know you are like, Molimu, what is that now? How can I do consolidation question in 25 minutes? At this point, you say that as much as it is always very important for us to look at it practically, but also for the purpose of exams, for the purpose of exams, we must be having strategies. And that's why I'm telling you that it's a strategy whereby you can do consolidation with only 25 minutes and you scoop more than a half of the marks allocated in that question. I know you are like, Molim, what is that strategy? Can you share? Of course, I'd share that strategy earlier on. Of course, you can preview the videos that we'll be doing. I did uh, that. Uh, I share that strategy of consolidation. So this is financial reporting. And again, you should not forget about what? You should not forget about what we are referring to as theories. Theories will also give you a lot of marks. Theories will also give you a lot of marks, my good students. Theory will also give you a lot of marks. 
So that is basically financial reporting, which is a serial killer, and talk about what aspect of uh, financial management, which is a serial killer, and talk about what financial reporting, what we've just covered here right now, what we've just covered here right now. Then there are these other areas, of course, talk about public, fin uh, public finance and taxation, as well as management accounting. Again, remember these are the units as, as also where yeah, they're also at this stage of intermediate level. Management accounting, there are some areas that you must be very good at, as well as tax. But for tax, I've done so many videos in relation to tax, the basic concepts and everything that you must be very good at whenever you hear about tax. I've done a lot of videos on that. Still, I'll try and attach the links for the videos just below this, just below this video. Molimu will do for management accounting and I'll also share for the same. Now, in this case, you'll also find that uh, there is uh, advanced uh, financial management, which basically is also a serial killer in uh, advanced level. So talk about advanced financial management. I know these are also one of uh, the serial killers in advanced level. But before we dissect uh, what uh, we should be very good at in advanced financial management, I wish to share something with us guys. And I know uh, this is a very noble course that a majority of you can also come in hand and support. I'm having my friend who, come, who came up with uh, this initiative. His name is uh, CPA Douglas Mohati. The initiative basically is to provide access to materials to those, uh, or rather to those students probably who can't manage to either go to class or they don't have enough resources per se. And they normally tend to use libraries a lot, whereby their only source of dependence is on libraries. So. This initiative is basically to donate these books to the national libraries. The current book drive basically is for Kisi, Kisi libraries and uh, Nyeri libraries, Kenya national libraries. So whereby we are inviting all of you to come and assist in making sure or enabling these uh, guys from uh, rural areas to access to these updated study materials. I know probably majority of uh, us or uh, you guys also you might be having an experience whereby you really wanted to study, but access to updated materials was quite challenging. So this initiative basically is to provide these CPA books, making sure that young accountants get quality, accessible, uh, and uh, easy way to access these uh, materials. So I'm sharing a till number here, which if at all, if you find this uh, uh, initiative to be uh, very kind of, uh, if you find this in initiative to be uh, a noble cause, I've shared uh, the details there. We've only remained with uh, 15 days. We had a target of raising up to 400,000 shillings. As of now, quite a good amount has been raised. So what Molimu is uh, really requesting us is that uh, we can support this course by donating to the TIL number that has been indicated there on the screen. I've just shared it. You can also contact the contact person, the initiator of this initiative, CPA Douglas, the contact is there. And let us make sure that in whichever way possible, as much as it is always our dream to be accountants also, let us also assist other people to achieve their dreams, right? Whichever amount that you can donate, we really appreciate. Basically, the hard copy content of uh, the books that you're planning is going for roughly like uh, 1,600 shillings. So if you feel you can donate one book or you can donate more than uh, one book, we will really, really appreciate, guys, your input on this. And let us help 
students who are studying using library resources to continue with their studies at least at least also them to basically enjoy the studies you might be lucky maybe you're watching us via youtube because probably as much as a little you have you can be able to access bundles but imagine there are those who can't even access bundles there are those who don't even have smartphones to access this those are the people that you are targeting those who normally go to libraries to make sure or rather to use the resources of the libraries so kindly guys i'm requesting you whichever case that you can uh, help in this cause we will really really appreciate and as i mentioned earlier on this is an initiative of uh, one of uh, my very good friend known as what C known as a C known as a cpa douglas known as a cpa douglas muhati the number is there the number is there so kindly you can chip in whatever that you can assist in Nyeri and Kisi, later on the drive will be going to other areas. Mm -hmm. After looking at that case, guys, I want us now to dissect key areas that we should also be able to understand in advanced financial management. So that you can see before you go to sit for advanced financial paper, which area must you be very good at? Number one which is very vital and trust you me i'm using the word can't you can't pass this paper clearly in advanced financial management if you don't have this knowledge that is of course advanced capital budgeting decisions advanced advanced capital budgeting decisions advanced capital budgeting decisions very key very 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 key actually decisional decisions so you'll find that uh, this area these are where you're going to get uh, the whole concepts of uh, uh, aspects to do the sensitivity analysis talk about scenario analysis we'll always be talking about uh, aspect to do the decision tree we're having simulation analysis risk discounted rate actually this is one of the longest uh, topic at this uh, uh, unit that is uh, of course advanced capital budgeting decision if you're keen enough you will realize that uh, capital budgeting decision is also at our basic level it is also at our basic our basic level so once you have mastered this area you will increase your chances of passing advanced financial management number two we are talking about portfolio theory and analysis portfolio portfolio theory and analysis portfolio theory and analysis you'll also realize that portfolio theory and analysis basically this concept for portfolio theory and analysis it will it was also at our intermediate level and that's why uh, uh, at intermediate you are terming it as what well, introduction to portfolio but this time round, we'll be digging deep into portfolio theory and analysis. So this is also one of the very vital topics that you must make sure that you are good at, that you are good at. Then talk about number three. We'll be looking, of course, advanced financing decision. Advanced financing decisions. Advanced financing decision. I know many a times you'll find that a student, uh, if you take a sample of students in uh, advanced level who are doing compulsory papers, out of 10 who are taking, who are doing a retake, you'll find that like, eight, uh, like six of them are either doing AFM or leadership and management. Leadership and management is also another serial killer. As much as it is a theory, it is also another, it is another serial killer here. But leadership and management, I think, had done that video, which you can go and check it out. So advanced financing decision also is one key area that, uh, again, you must be very good at at this level. And at this point, basically, we'll be talking about the concepts of uh, uh, Modigliani and Miller. I know you do understand about that. We'll be talking about aspect of... Uh, uh, that is, of course, uh, adjusted uh, present value, right? These are the items that we'll be covering under aspect of what? Advanced financing, 
advanced financing decision advanced financing decision uh huh in addition to that my good students another key area that you should be very good at is basically mergers and acquisition mergers and acquisitions mergers and acquisitions mergers and acquisitions mergers and acquisitions basically this is so very important that at least we must also be very good at and of course finalizing on the key areas in advanced financial management also make sure that you're good at what aspect of uh, that is of course uh, uh, financial risk management financial risk management financial risk management financial risk management we can also slash it with uh, international financial management international financial international financial management international financial management so once you're good in these five main topics once you're very good in these five topics i'm very sure there's no way that you can do fm twice that one i'm 100 percent sure once you're good in these five topics that i mentioned here there's no way you can do fm twice there's no way you can do fm twice and you supplement it with theories you supplement this with theories there's no way that you can do fm there's no way you can do fm twice so basically mark these areas clearly we also have uh, actually for theories we do have a very good summary for theory q and a of fm if you are interested of course you can always reach us on the number below and we'll share these notes for to you guys it will really 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 help you to really 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 help you so uh once we have uh, once we are good with this i know you guys you're earning mwalimu continue give us also for fr give us also for advanced financial reporting allow mwalimu to do for advanced financial reporting in the next video as well as other areas which uh, ideally will also be doing uh uh, I'll also be doing the videos for other units at least to make sure you guys you identify these few hacks and very important hacks which will really help you to be able to do or to be able to uh, always pass these papers on first attempt on a first attempt. So to this point uh, guys I uh, really I want to say thank you so much for being with me all through the session. And by the way at this point as you are preparing for your exams we're having a very special package for you guys. We're having a very, very special package for you guys. And for those students who are doing the exams in one month's time, right from now. Where in this case, we'll be having revisions only. You see the areas that we've been looking at. The areas, the main areas that you must be very good at. Basically, these are under revisions. For revisions only, we are charging only 2,000 shillings. This is revisions only. Till you do exams, imagine. Till you do exams. Then, this is after all, if you really, really believe in yourself that you've studied your coursework very well. If you've studied your coursework and you really believe in yourself, of course, you can go with the package of revisions only. But, wait for this. We're having the coursework, full coursework, plus revisions. Basically, full coursework, this is uh, basically arranged from topic one to the last, plus revisions. We're having this very special package, which we are charging 3,000 per unit. Which we are charging 3,000 shillings per unit. This is a very special package, which I know, if you take this, if you are at 20% chance of passing, you'll have increase it to almost... 70 to 80 percent chance of chance of passing so i wish you guys to take advantage of this party that you're giving you guys we do understand that right now economy is not quite okay and that's why you are coming up with this special package because our happiness is to see you guys passing your exams so this is a very special party that you're having if interested of course you can always engage us on the number just below this video you can always get in touch and we'll guide you on how to access this and for our current students and of course new students will be coming 
At this point, uh, yes, we are having a phone application for you to use it on your laptop. We advise you use app.mdarasa, app.mdarasa.co.ke. You can use your PC. You can use your PC or laptop. The same link can also be accessible using your phone. So we've locked download on a phone app and all of it we've directed it on app.mdarasa.co.ke which you can download all this content clearly either using your phone or using your laptop to enable you to study even without what internet even without internet so to this point guys that was all for today i really wish you all the best as you prepare for your exams and of course you can choose mdarasa as your study partner at least let us hold your hand to make sure that you pass these exams on your first attempt. I'll do more videos for the other units, then I'll be uploading them soon. To this point, guys, thank you so much, and let us meet in the next video.